We hear words thrown around a lot that we don't always understand their meaning. I want to talk for you a minute about inflammation. Inflammation is a biological process that's necessary for our overall health. A lot of times inflammation has symptoms like hot, itchy, um, swollen. We notice these different symptoms and it's often a sign that our body is inflamed. However, we also have lots of times that there's high amounts of inflammation, but we don't have external symptoms or so we think. So often we hear these words thrown around and because we don't understand their root cause of what's really going on, there's a lot of misinformation out there. So with inf inflammation, it is necessary for our body to be able to inflame so that it can take a targeted approach to what needs to be supported in your body. So in order for our body to anti-inflame, it first must inflame. So often we want to do things that just reduce or eliminate inflammation altogether, and that is imperative, but not so much in the way that we oftentimes think of it. So a lot of times when I'm working with women that have a high amount of inflammation, they're put on a medication that helps their body body to stop the inflammation process. The reason that that's not helpful always is because when our body inflames, it's telling us something's off, something's not right, and we need to pay attention to it. So for example, with endometriosis, what's happening with endometriosis is the uterine lining actually begins to grow outside of the uterus. As a result, our immune system attacks anything that isn't where it should be. It sees that uterine lining that is outside of the uterus as a foreign invader. This is why a hallmark of endometriosis is highly inflammatory state. So when we do something like take a medication that just helps to reduce the overall inflammation or stop our body from inflaming to begin with, then it never has the opportunity to get beyond that. Um, so we really want to take another step back. Instead of just taking a medication, we want to say, what am I doing in my day-to-day -day life that is contributing to the inflammation? inflammation. So we know that a lot of diet and lifestyle factors do actually contribute to inflammation. Things like gluten, dairy, sugar are highly inflammatory. Even if we don't actually have a sensitivity to that, if we have a situation where our body is chronically inflamed, this can be a problem. So we really want to take a step back and think about what is the natural biological process that is going right. The body's ability to inflame is critical but perhaps it is out of control. So when that's the case, we wanna dig a little deeper into what can I do to take my health back into my own hands.